Good afternoon, and thank you very much for the opportunity to present here at Colda. Hopefully next year we'll be able to meet in person. The title of my presentation is NAFLD in Africa, and I'll also be presenting specifically about the work the ESO International Liver Foundation, where I sit as vice chair, is undertaking in this area. These are my disclosures. Now, the ESO International Liver Foundation was created by the European Association for the Study of the Liver as a global nonprofit organization committed to increasing the quality of life and reducing premature mortality for the greatest number of people by improving liver health. Our vision is that everyone deserves a healthy liver and our values reside in solidarity, impact, integrity, and neutrality. This is our board and you'll recognize Manel El Sayed who was who is among the conveners of Colder as well as many experts in the field of hepatology and other areas. The four program pillars of the foundation's work are research, education, interventions, and awareness. So why did we decide to prioritize NAFLD and NASH? Well, NAFLD is a global issue. It affects somewhere around one in five people around the world. The prevalence varies greatly between countries. It's a serious, it has a serious health, economic, and social implications. And it's a complex challenge requiring us to work across disciplines and sectors to find solutions. Finally, it's a silent epidemic. Unlike HIV, which we're well aware of, and viral hepatitis, which the world is now well aware of, COVID-19 and others, NAFLD has received little attention from policymakers or the public health community. Now there's little available NAFLD prevalence data for Sub-Saharan Africa. If you look here at the map, you'll see that most of Africa is in gray because no data is available from the time of this study a few years ago. But you will see that in the countries where there is data from South Africa um, to others in North Africa, the prevalence is estimated as high as over 30%. And we have really no reason to believe that the prevalence in Sub-Saharan Africa would be much different than in other parts of the world. And in other parts of the world, we largely see prevalence rates some from between 10 to 25 percent. On the right, you can see two studies, um, one from Sudan, one from Nigeria, um, showing prevalence rates of around 20 percent and around eight and a half percent. Those are older studies, and we know that in general, very little is known about the prevalence of NAFLD, similar to viral hepatitis a few years ago and similar to HIV many years ago. So what are the risk factors? Well, we do know that obesity is a major driver of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And for obesity, we do have good global data and strong data from Sub-Saharan Africa as well. So here you'll see that most countries um, have at least an eight to 10% prevalence and some countries as high as over one in four or even a third of the population being reported to be obese. So what are we doing in this area? Well, the foundation is working with partners to advance the NAFLD public health research agenda. It's not just prevalence that we don't know a lot about. We also don't know about what kinds of models of care are in place and what's working and what exactly we need to do in terms of clinical care pathways and addressing the public health and health systems issues that can be addressed to address the clinical issue of NAFLD. We're trying to link NAFLD to the sustainable development goals and we're working with partners and you're welcome to contact me or the foundation to develop a call to action to be launched at International NASH Day, the 12th of June in, in 2021. So we're sounding the alarm on this silent epidemic. We've held a series of regional workshops with the Economist Intelligence Unit that I'm going to tell you a bit more about. We're working with the UK-based think tank, Wilton Park, on policy events. And we have publications and journals like Nature Reviews, Gastrohepatology, 
um, and BMJ opinion and others on the way to mark International Day to draw attention to the issue, but also to focus on issues like models of care and linking NAFLD to the SDGs. We're also working to build consensus for a roadmap addressing what we need to do to address NAFLD NASH as um, a public health challenge and to create a network of global experts and thought leaders to guide this process. And finally, we're working to provide a platform for patients and patient advocates to engage in the dialogue and shape these discussions. We don't want to make the mistakes we've made earlier in, uh, with other conditions by not involving civil society, patients, and other important groups from the beginning. So I mentioned the global review of, of NAFLD and NASH related policies that we're undertaking. Um, we originally carried out this study in Europe. Now we're undertaking a global study of which 90 countries have provided data, including 13 in Sub-Saharan Africa. You can see them below. And if any of you are from countries not on that list, do contact us because we would very much like to expand the number of countries providing information about NAPLD and NASH in their country. And these findings will provide a baseline for future efforts and can support knowledge sharing between countries and regions. It will also be used to develop a policy index for tracking national, regional, and global progress. You see here on the right from the European study of 29 countries, the first question we asked was, does your country have any written national NAFLD or NASH strategy or action plan? The answer was no. And without sharing all the results for the 90 countries that we've studied now to date, the answer continues to be, unfortunately, no. So let me share with you some of the interim findings from this global policy review. If you look at the top line, you see the data from Sub-Saharan Africa. At this stage, we've compiled the information from nine of the countries. None have a strategy, as I already mentioned, but none have guidelines on NAFLD NASH. And look at this compared to other parts of the world, including Europe and Central Asia, where more than a third of the countries do, or Latin America and the Caribbean, where five out of eight do. That doesn't mean that you may not use guidelines published elsewhere, but it means that your country, your professional organizations have no specific um, NAFLD or NASH guideline. There are no registries in Sub-Saharan Africa, though three countries did report that they are implementing lifestyle programs in response to NAFLD, NASH. And that's extremely important in the absence of any available treatment. Regarding the management of NAFLD in Sub-Saharan Africa, here are the interim findings from the nine countries reporting. We asked about professionals responsible for managing patients with NAFLD, and you'll see that it's mostly gastroenterologists, also internal medicine specialists and hepatologists, no surprise there. In one country, they reported a primary care physician and in one, a multidisciplinary team. We believe that multidisciplinary teams are essential in the management of NAFLD, given that it's a metabolic syndrome. Countries in which primary care providers are responsible for the care of the following conditions, conditions that are common, comorbidities, obesity, diabetes, type two, metabolic syndrome, and harmful alcohol use. You can see here that primary care does play a role, which means that it's extremely important that primary care physicians are somehow connected to the specialists in order to, to refer them on to care or in order to provide the right care um, if, a if seeing a specialist is not needed. Now, I mentioned that the ESO International Liver Foundation is working with the think tank Wilton Park. Um, because NAFLD has received so little attention within the non-communicable disease movement and other global health policies, such as the Sustainable Development Goals and universal health coverage, we set up a series of meetings to conduct high-level dialogues which aim to provide strategic direction for advancing the NAFLD policy agenda. We've established an advisory board of global experts, including hepatologists, NCD specialists, public health experts, and patient advocates to guide this process. 
So NAFLD care requires multidisciplinary approaches with increased coordination and collaboration between disciplines to ensure timely diagnosis of the condition and the appropriate management of common comorbidities. Together with Wilton Park, we had a meeting on the models of care that would be able to do this. Clear policies are needed to shape the grounds for the development and implementation of innovative care pathways for NAFLD patients specific to their position on the disease spectrum. That meeting was held last June and we shined that spotlight on improving models of care. It was largely focused on Europe, but we are expanding that to become a global study and focus area of our work. And at that meeting, we had 30 experts who reviewed a draft call to action, which I will also share with the participants at COLDA when it's ready, where we outline seven recommendations for improving models of care. We're also leading a systematic review to identify any published examples of comprehensive models of care, which can strengthen the global evidence base. Unfortunately, though not surprising, none of those are in Sub-Saharan Africa. That is something that will have to change in future, and I hope at future COLDA meetings we'll be able to address models of care specifically for NAFLD and NASH, just as we've done for viral hepatitis. Now those recommendations are still in draft form, but they're really focused around what services should be provided, where should services be delivered, who should deliver services, and how do we ensure coordination and integration. Now, we're planning a second Wilton Park meeting, hopefully face-to-face -face this coming December. Again, bringing together thought leaders and other experts from around the world um, in order to address the creation of this global co coalition, which will steward efforts to advance the NAFLD uh, public health agenda. We're also running a series of 14 workshops together with the Economist Intelligence Unit focused on Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East this year, but hopefully Sub-Saharan Africa sometime next year. And through these workshops, um, we aim to identify and understand the opportunities and challenges for addressing NAFLD and NASH at the national, regional, and global level from improving care to integrating NAFLD into public health policies. The series specifically addressed screening, diagnosis and referral pathways, integrated models of care for patients with NAFLD and NASH, and incorporating NAFLD into the NCD movement and broader public health efforts. And we'll be providing a series of summaries with the key learnings from the series. Here are some of our recent publications that I mentioned when I was presenting the work of the foundation. So on World or International NASH Day 2020, we um, launched a comment called NAFLD sounding the alarm on a silent epidemic. Um, but at the same time, we focused on envis envisaging a new better normal for all non-communicable diseases, including NAFLD, which is often left out of the NCD agenda. So let me thank my colleagues at the International Liver Foundation for the incredible work um, they've been putting into building the coalition and really building the foundation's platform for NAFLD, NASH, and coordinating with so many different partners, as well as Nancy Lee at Wilton Park, the experts at the Economist Intelligence Unit, and all of the participants at the EIU workshops, at the Wilton Park meetings, the various patient and civil society groups that have been providing us with expert inputs on really what we need to do as a foundation to advance the NAFLD and NASH agenda. Thank you very much.